Hello, hello, good afternoon. It's Monica from Life is Art, and this is the Thursday 3.30 p.m. demo at the Caribbean Cruise Online Crop, and I'm just getting myself set up here. Uh, we had a lovely afternoon of chatting and crafting. Thank you to those who were able to join in live. I know some of you are at work today, and that really means no fun. <laughs> hey, Katie, nice to see you watching. So if you're joining me live, just say hello or howdy so I know you're here. And if you're watching later on replay, you can say replay. And we are going to be um, doing some crafting, again, using the Cape Cod collection from the July-August catalog. And we're going to be using this stamp set. This morning we used the Cape Cod card making and this afternoon we're going to be using the scrapbooking stamp set, but we're not going to be scrapbooking. We're making a card. Weird, eh? Um, I'm sure we will use this again, though, during the crop and we'll make a layout. But <laughs> today we are going to be doing a card and we're going to be doing some fun stuff. And you might be able to tell that I have my all-purpose mat down here on the table. And that's usually a good indication that we're going to be doing something that requires a little bit of mess. And so um, I'm just grabbing some things from the side here. We're going to start with a piece of white daisy cardstock. Isn't that a great way to start? I always enjoy starting a, um, a layout with white daisy. And so we're going to start our card with white daisy. And I'm just checking my comments here. Hey, Laura, nice to see you're watching. Allison's here, right? Long time no see. We were just crafting together. Uh, I love that um, the internet allows us to craft from all sorts of places and spend time together. Hey, Deborah, and uh, Robin's here too. Hey. So we're going to start with this piece of white daisy and a uh, crafting tool that you don't often see me pull out. We're going to use a paintbrush, and I think this is Oh, I don't know, about an inch wide paintbrush, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and we're going to use some Lagoon ink to start off with. And Lagoon is one of the coordinating colors for the um, Cape Cod collection. And so we're going to use this. And we're just going to go ahead and put some of that lovely Lagoon ink right on the all-purpose mat. And that way we can make a mess and then wipe it up later and nobody is the wiser. It doesn't leave um, stuff all over our table if we do it that way. <laughs> so I have just a little spray bottle here because I need some water for this technique. Uh, so you're getting a technique and a demonstration all at once. And so we're going to just spray a whole bunch of water on there and I'm even going to spray my brush a bit because I don't actually have a jar of water in here. But a little extra water on our brush is good. And then what we're going to do, I probably even have too much ink on there but that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to take this little piece of paper and let me see, I cut it to uh, four and three quarters by four and a half. That's the measurement I started out with there. So we're going to just get some inky and some wetness on our brush. And then we're going to do this. We're going to go swishy, swishy, swishy across our page in sort of a little wavy motion. And then we're going to go again and they're going to kind of overlap. And we're just going to keep dipping it in, getting it wet, and working our way across. Now, you'll find this is not watercolor paper, so it will buckle and do all those fun things that paper does. But um, we're not using tons of water, and uh, so it'll be fine. <laughs> it's all good. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm, now that we've done some nice big wide waves, I'm going to kind of take the end of my brush and just kind of like swizzle it a bit as I go across and it's going to create some fun little sort of extra little wavy lines like that, which can be super fun. And that's it. That's, that's all we're doing on that. So I can set that aside to dry and I will clean my brush a smidgen here. It's interesting when you use ink in a brush, if you just saw me squirt it once there, now I'm going to squirt it again, 
And look at that, how quickly the ink actually disappears out of the brush. It's unlike paint, like paint, I would have to like take it to the sink and wash it. But ink really kind of disappears pretty quickly. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't accumulate, probably because it's so liquidy would be my assumption. And so let's wipe that up. And I'm even going to grab my stamp chamois. You can definitely use your stamp chamois to clean off your all-purpose mat. Especially when you're working with ink, it's all the same, whether it's on a stamp or on the mat. And then we're going to allow this to dry. And it will curl a little bit, but we're going to stick it down later. So it really doesn't matter if it curls a little bit. I'm going to bring back in my Versamat so we don't have to stare at the glare. That rhymes. Stare at the glare that's created with the lights. <laughs> and um, let me just stick that up there out of the way. And we're going to be creating a card today that is a little bit different size than normal. We're going to be using a 5x7 card base. So I'm going to fold it same as I do every other card base with the bump side to the inside. These have come pre-scored. And just fold it down. I don't think I have made too many 5x7 cards, so it's always kind of a fun challenge when I do. Hey Heather, nice to see you're watching. And Lynn's here. Hey Cindy, Mom's here too. Woohoo! We're all enjoying some crafty time today. Okay. So the next thing I want to do, I'm going to set this aside again. We're going to just kind of bring in things in and then putting them aside. This is one of the pattern papers from Cape Cod. And you may have noticed the title when you clicked to join the video is Happiness Comes in Waves. And this pattern paper um, is kind of done in sort of that oscillating sort of wave pattern like you would get with... Um, like sound waves, <laughs> and it that's it just repeats over and over again. Happiness comes in waves. Happiness comes in waves, and I think that's really pretty. And so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of play up that um, wave pattern a little bit, and we're going to cut along that pattern. So we're just going to trim out a few things here to add on to our card, and we're just going to kind of follow that wave. And I'm kind of more following the words on the line below when I'm doing this. You knew there was going to be fussy cutting, right? You didn't even know that it was going to be pattern paper. <laughs> and then we're going to come up here and we're going to follow the one above. And that gives us a nice little bit of space around our words. And we're just going to go. It's a little harder on this side because... I don't have a lot to grip onto to pivot. So I'm pivoting kind of my paper and my scissors. And I usually don't do that. But there we go. So now we've got our little strip there. that says, comes in waves. Happiness comes. <laughs> and now we're going to go again. So we're going to come up here. And this time I'm going to cut out a wider chunk. And I'm going to do three lines of the wave pattern all the way across. And just keep following. The piece that is coming off here in the um, to the right of my scissors, I've kind of chopped through the words. So it doesn't really work so much as um, words, but you could use it as a mask if you wanted to uh, do some splattering or something. That would be super fun. So you could always use it for something else. It doesn't even have to be used as pattern paper. And then we can go ahead and cut the top side. I just think this is such a fun pattern, and I like the sentiment that it has. And you know what? When you have pattern paper like this on your card, you barely need a sentiment because it's already kind of there, just worked into the pattern paper. So there we go. We've got those cut. And then I want to bring in that Lagoon ink again. We're going to just keep repeating with this Lagoon, apparently. And I'm going to use um, some foam here. And I want to add some ink just to the top of this one. So I'm just going to follow that curve. And thankfully, it's a nice sort of smooth curve. So the big blending foam can kind of reach in there. And go all the way across. And then on this one, I want to ink the bottom. 
And they know it's the bottom because the words are the right way up. <laughs> I could ink both sides too, but I only really need to ink the bottom. It's just so that when I add it to my card, there's a little bit of separation from the background and make it stand out because the colors in this collection are so lovely and soft. So sometimes you need to add a little bit to oomph it up and make them stand out, stand out from the crowd. Okay, so let's bring in our card base again, and I'm creating it on the vertical. Scooch those over. And so I've got my fold to the left. The first piece I want to add is a piece of toffee cardstock, and this has been cut to uh, four and three quarters by one inch. And this is kind of my representation of sand, you know, because it's all very beachy. So this is my sand, and I cut it using the true color side of the toffee. So it's a little bit darker, so it's wet sand. If you got the light side, that would be sort of the dry sand, right? <laughs> it's fun, too, if you tear the paper and um, put the two together, and then it looks like you got wet sand and, and dry sand. So let's just kind of center this in the bottom. There's going to be a bit of the white um, card base showing around there like that. And then let's bring in our piece that we did with the waves. And yep, it's already dry because we didn't go too crazy with the water on this one. Just kind of remember which way was up. It's funny, when you do something with a paintbrush, you do it in one direction. And if you go and turn it around you're going to look at it and be like, that's upside down. It's funny because you would think something like a wave wouldn't matter, but it totally does. <laughs> so weird. Who knew? All right, so we're going to add some adhesive on here. And this was cut to, did I tell you? I don't remember if I told you. Um, we're putting lots of adhesive on here because we want to deal with the bow that happens when you get one side of the paper wet. One way to kind of help it from bowing quite so much is you can do a little bit of a spritz or run the brush over the back side with just some water and that kind of evenly uh, wets the paper and then it doesn't bow as much. But this was um, four and three quarters by four and a half. I think I did say that earlier. And then I can go ahead and take the backings off of all these. If you use a tape runner, you don't have to do this, but I kind of like this style of adhesive. So, you know, <laughs> you got to deal with all the backing paper. There we go. Okay, now let's see which way was which way. Yeah, my brain is telling me something right now, and then I've got it right. <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to tuck this down here right on top of that toffee paper, and hopefully it's nice and true-ish. <laughs> so we'll line it up like that, adding in our nice little waves above our sand. And then I want to bring in a piece of Lagoon, and um, this has been cut to four and three quarters by one and a half, but... Our, our paper is actually going to overlap onto there. So we're just going to go ahead and add that and allow the overlap to happen. It's nice when you're kind of doing a large area and you're lining things up to have that sort of buffer area where things can overlap if they need to. And so I'm just going to turn my paper here and line myself up. It also helps to kind of correct any wandering that happens. <laughs> like if something starts going crooked, you can fix it a little bit. And my next step is um, to add in my waves, and those are actually going to overlap right on top of that join as well. So you're not seeing a lot of that lagoon, but um, we needed to build that up so that this was kind of a similar depth before we put the pattern paper on because we got lots of cardstock happening under there. So let's go ahead and add some adhesive to this. And this is the triple section of our waves. And you can see too now, when I stick it down, why we added that little bit of the 
um, the lagoon at the bottom. It just kind of makes that edge stand out a bit more. Now, I'm, do I'm doing this from an awkward place, and I can tell it's going to be crooked, but it might be down there. <laughs> um, I find because I'm working kind of far away from my face that I have a hard time lining things up, making them straight. So, you know, there's that. Now, for this piece, because it's wiggly-woggly, I'm actually going to just add my adhesive right to my base page, right in between the toffee and the painted paper. And then I can just stick this on here, about halfway in between, like so. And again, I think I'm going uphill, but it is what it is. <sighs> And what's next? What's next? What's next? Oh, from our stamp set, we have some really cool stamps in here. And you remember this morning I was talking about how the stamps were created so they create that variation in intensity of color. These stamps are the same way. So they do a really cool job of stamping the images. And I love this one, the rope. I'm going to definitely have to use that at some point here. Um, but it's not not getting used on this card. So the first thing that I've done, and I did this ahead of time because I did some fussy cutting. There are um, there are dies in here for cutting out the crab and the seahorse and the coral and this, but um, I needed to do some fussy cutting. And so I didn't use my dies for the coral. I went ahead and cut it out myself. So I inked up my stamp and I stamped it in papaya and I also stamped it in wisteria which I'm sorry periwinkle not wisteria periwinkle so those are two really nice colors that look good with um, this collection and I'm going to stick this down just with a little bit of glue at the bottom and when I do things that have been cut out like this I tend to only add a little bit of glue at the bottom and that way, these little bits can kind of lift a little bit. And because I only added the glue down the center, I should be able to tuck this underneath that part of the little pattern paper there and stick that down like that. And then this little guy, we're kind of creating some dimension here by putting things under layers and over layers. So we're going to stick this guy down here like so and he's now on top and also down a little bit into the sandy bottom of the water and then we have this cute 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 little seahorse and so we're gonna have to stamp him up and cut him out so let me just grab the stamp off of here again when you're Lifting your stamps, you want to lift and then walk your fingers so you're not stretching and pulling and all that stuff. You don't want to do that. Scooch them over. Pick them up with the block like so. And did I grab some white daisy for stamping? I bet you I didn't. But you know what I have? I have a whole drawer full of scrappy bits. I keep all my scraps in there. I'm just making sure that's white daisy. It is. <laughs> I have a drawer beside me where I put little scrap pieces of white daisy and um, and black cardstock, so that when I'm creating, I can just reach in there and grab a little a little smidgen of something. So I'm going to use melon ink, so it's a little bit lighter than the papaya, but very similar. And we're going to ink up this cute little guy and stamp him on there. Just give a second for that ink to transfer. And now you can see when I lift him up here, the very cool effect that these stamps are having. So you see we stamped it with one color and you can see parts of the seahorse that are very dark and then some that are faded out and some that are really, really light. And there's even a few spots where they left the white space. And I think that is super cool. It makes the stamped image look very realistic I guess and so now we're going to grab the die off our 
die set. We're going to grab some washi tape. See, normally I would fussy cut this, but, you know, I'm going to force myself to use a die cut. Because <laughs> they work so well. It's just that I love fussy cutting. There's nothing wrong with die cuts. All right, so we'll just line this up. Now, a lot of people will die cut first and stamp second. And quite often when you see the instructions from Close to My Heart, they have you do that. But I am not so good at lining up my stamp on a cut out piece. And so I always uh, stamp first and then I can see where I'm sticking my die. And that just seems to work better for me. So everybody has a preference and that's mine. There we go. Our cute little seahorse. Just grab him. Move this out of the way so we can keep crafting. There we go. Okay. There's our little guy. He's so cute. We're going to add a little bit of foam tape to the back of him. Cindy's saying, I wish, your, I wish your order was in so you could do this card. It will come. It will come. And then you'll have lots of things to do. We're adding our foam tape onto this little guy to kind of pop him up. Give him a little bit of, of lift off of the background. Uh, Laura stamps first too. Yep. Yeah, I find it's just easier because I can just sit there and take my time and line up the die and, you know. All that kind of good things. We're going to stick this little guy on here right like that. And then let me see. Have I done? I've done that. I've done that. I've done that. All right. Going to move our Versamat out of the way again because we're going to do some more messy. Where did I put it? Here it is. We're going to use our white gloss spray. Now, this is a retiring item and it's out of stock. So that means... You can't buy it anymore, sadly. Um, but the white gloss spray, you can get it lots of places. It's the Dina Wakely. And it's super fun. And I wanted to add it to this project um, because it kind of makes it look a little bit like foamy and bubbly. And so I'm just using the wand and I'm just going to tap and splatter some little white acrylic gloss spray around and on top of everything just kind of we're just like you know you would take powder sugar on top of your baking <laughs> we're just sprinkling it on top because it kind of looks like little bubbles and little sea foams and we're just going to add it on there for a nice little touch and if you're like me you will get it on your hands you will get it everywhere it's all good and then we're just going to lift this up and give this a wipe and you want to clean this up pretty quick because it is paint and it will dry pretty fast. But once it does dry, you can actually just like it flicks off of this all purpose mat. It does not stay forever. <laughs> I can guarantee it because this um, this would be covered in it if it did. <laughs> and it's not. So we got to give that a moment to dry. And let's see if we can line ourselves back up. And then I also want to add, where did I put it? There we go. I want to add some melon dots. And I'm almost out of these. Melon was the color of the year all this year. And so it's going to be retiring soon. And I have these little stars. And I thought that was just super cute for on this card because... Um, they're going to look like little kind of starfish down on the bottom of the ocean. And we're just going to go ahead and put a few of them. One there and one more little guy down there. So cute. And then one more thing. But wait, there's more. We're going to add one more thing. We're going to bring in this sticker sheet. Isn't this gorgeous? From the Cape Cod collection. And there's a whole bunch of nice little sentiments down here. Vitamin C, Paradise Found, Sunshine and Sea, Happy as a Clam, A Day in the Sunshine, Beach Bum, At the Shore, Beach Lover, Relax and Enjoy, lots of fun sentiments. And you definitely can put them on scrapbook pages, but you can also use them on your cards. So I'm going to use this Relax and Enjoy 
And I think I'm even going to pop it up with some foam tape. So we're going to grab our foam tape. I should grab the skinny foam tape. You see, I think I have a teeny tiny little bit of it down in the bottom of my box. Look at that, just about an inch of it left. So we're going to snip a few pieces. We're going to stick it on the back of our sticker. There we go. One on each end. And we'll stick one in the middle like that. And then grab the anti-static pouch. And what this is going to do is going to add that little bit of powder on there to take the stick off of our sticker. De-stickifying. There we go. And then if it gets smooshed in the mail, our sticker won't want to stick to the back of our card. It'll still be nice and raised and pop, popped up. So then we can add this on here like this. Relax and enjoy. Hopefully not crooked like everything else on there. And there we go. That is our completed Happiness Comes in Waves card featuring that beautiful Cape Cod paper and scrapbooking stamp set with that gorgeous little seahorse. Isn't he just the most awesome thing? I haven't even tried stamping the little crab yet, but I was super excited about the seahorse because I think seahorses just look so cool. <laughs> so we started out with our 5x7 card base and we took our white daisy paper and we did some um, sort of watercolor painting with the Lagoon ink and a big wide brush and created sort of lovely wave pattern in the background. Then we cut out our um, wave pattern from the pattern paper, inked the edges, adding in a bit of toffee and lagoon, top and bottom, layered them all up, stamped in papaya and um, periwinkle, the coral here, and then this little guy in melon, adding our sticker and our dots and our gloss spray little bubbles all over. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that come together, maybe learned a new technique with this um, painting, and I hope you feel inspired to create a little bit of sun and surf of your own. Have a wonderful afternoon, and we will be back on at 7 o'clock for Chat and Craft. See you then. Toodaloo. Bye.